everyone. Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. Hope you're doing well. I had a lesson. Oh, by the way, we're in the studio. Nobody's here. It's about 10 p.m. on a Tuesday night. Rusty came by, said, hey, let's do some video. And I thought, perfect, we have got an idea. I, many of you know that I do a lot of privates and sometimes I remember, hey, you know, there's one lesson that I might have given to a particular student that I, I've given to, to all the time, multiple times, and it just dawned on me, hey, let's do a video on it. And that video just has to do with learning jujitsu. There's really two phases of doing jujitsu. Phase number one, which is the most important part, is what I call the left brain side, the scientific side. Jiu-Jitsu is a science, right? Even though we call it a martial art, it's a science in the very beginning. Why is that? It's because you need to learn a full database of techniques, right? We call that a curriculum. In your curriculum, you have step one, step two, step three, step one, right? And you have to learn it in order because sometimes some of the techniques you need to have a prerequisite in order to, to know it. Right? Just like in high school or college or whatever. You know, sometimes in order to learn, to know a certain concept, you have to learn 20 different concepts prior to that. And it's the same thing with Jiu-Jitsu. So as an example, a beginner needs to learn how to do, how to do the escape from the mount, escape from the worst position, escape from the seat belt, escape from the cross side, escape from the knee and belly, right? You need to learn all the escapes. You need to learn how to pass guard. You also then need to learn how to choke somebody from the guard, how to do an arm bar, how to do a sweep, how to choke somebody from the mount, right? So there's all these different things you need to know. You need to know how to do a bear hug escape. You know, bear hug escape when they're high in your armpits, bear hug escape when they're around your waist, bear hug escape when they pick you up, bear hug escape when they're under your arms, over your arms, when they're in the front, from the side, right? All these different things you need to learn. So that's the scientific part of it. You have to go through the curriculum. That's why in some other videos I'll talk about how if you're a blue belt, you can't have a game yet because you still don't know everything. And that's one of the major problems that that people who are younger in jujitsu have with what I say. They go, ah, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, I I I tend to be really good at arm bars and I get everybody in arm bars. It's like, okay, fine. Well, you know, so that's your game. Is that what it is? So okay, so you have a game, your game is catching everybody's arm bar and arm bars. Well, what if their defense, what if your opponent's defense is better than your ability to ability to arm bar? Right? Let's say your ability to, to, to execute arm bars is at a level seven, but their defense of blocking your arm bars is at a level 10. You'll never get them in an arm bar. So you need to have another thing to be able to go to. So let's say chokes, but you never practice chokes because you're encouraged to just keep doing arm bars, become an arm bar machine. That's where my problem is with not learning a curriculum because if you learn everything, you learn all the arm bars, all the chokes from all the positions, then you'll have a cursory understanding of everything. That's scientific, that's left brain. You need to logically go through things. That's where you learn your, if this happens, then, then I will do this. If that happens, then I will do that. You have to think in those terms in the very beginning because you have to know what the rules are, what the steps are, to be able to do this thing we call jujitsu. Now let's say you get into deep in the purple belt. And that's one thing I'll tell my students all the time. When they start experimenting and playing around with stuff, I'll ask them, are you deep in the purple belt? And obviously you can tell by looking at them if they're, you know, if they've been purple belt for a while, then it can be a yes or it could be a no, right? They could be a blue belt experimenting. So what are you doing? You're not, you, you still have stuff in the curriculum you need to learn. You're not ready for that particular concept you're doing. Just do what I'm telling you to do. So they learn it. My goal is to make sure they have all the bullet points of the curriculum in them and they understand it. And then once they have it all in there, that's where we can start to develop their game, right? Every time you're playing guard, here's what you're going to do. Every time you're in someone's guard, here's what you're going to do, right? Still scientific. Well, there are times when, as an experienced jujitsu stylist, practitioner, whatever you want to call it, you know that if I am in somebody's guard, I can do this, this, and this. Now it's not in the rules, but I know that for me, because I'm built a certain way, I know I can get away with it. Rusty actually brought a good point up and he says, you can't break the rules until you know the rules. 
So once you understand all the rules, once you do all the left brain, all the scientific stuff, all the early stuff, once you learn your curriculum, once you study the curriculum, once you memorize the curriculum, once you're able to call upon the curriculum, that's when the artistic part comes into it. That's when the right brain comes in. That's when you start to feel things, right? And you start to go, okay, this doesn't feel right. Whereas an earlier belt will be looking at something and go, this doesn't look right. A higher belt goes, this doesn't feel right. It doesn't matter what I see, but I feel something different. And that's where Hickson has his invisible jujitsu, right? Which Dave teaches us here at Kama Jiu-Jitsu. Because it, to, 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 the, to the outside person watching, they see something. But to the people that are training, they feel something completely different. That's where the artistic part comes in. Because that's where it has to be where it, it's not logical anymore. A feeling is not logical. A feeling is an emotional kind of thing. So as you get advanced, when you get to the advanced levels, once you know all the curriculum pieces, that's when you become artistic, right? Think about a painter. A painter is not an artist until they learn all the fundamentals of painting. Once they learn all the fundamentals of painting, they learn how to mix, they learn the types of strokes, they learn the types of mediums to paint on, they, they learn the types of paints to use, because they're all different kinds of paints too. Then they understand what the properties are of all the paints and the surfaces they're painting on, and then they can then become artists. And that's the same thing with Jujutsu. Once you understand to what level something is effective, once you understand to what level something will work and in what situation it works in all the situations it works in that's when you can start to do the feeling part and that's where the artistic part comes in so all i'm saying really is if you're a white belt if you're a blue belt if you're a purple belt don't be in such a rush to do the artistic part make sure you learn the scientific parts of jujitsu first conquer that once you understand that then you can start to doing the artistic part. So here's another example, a real life example. Think of when you go to school, you have to learn the ABCs. You have to learn what the letters are, you have to learn what the sounds are, and then you have to learn where they go. That's how you start forming words. You go letters to words, to phrases, to sentences, to paragraphs, to short stories, to novels. That's the order in which you go things. Now, go and, go and do things. You cannot write a novel until you understand what the ABCs are and where they fall into place and how to make words and sentence structure and paragraph structure and all that. So that's like me telling you on day one without learning the alphabet, here, write a novel. You're like, uh, okay, well, I don't know. Well, let me show you the alphabet here. Let me give you the 26 letters of the alphabet. Okay, and I'll write a novel. Well, no, you still can't do it. You're gonna need to learn the basics. And a lot of times instructors will tell their students and students, you know, they, they know the alphabet, but they don't know how to put words together yet. But they're expected to keep writing novels. They keep coming in, the instructor tells them, write a novel, write a novel, write a novel. And you're like, uh, 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 I don't know what to do here, right? Just like when you come into role, you, you train, you do your lesson, right? Your, your warm up, your short warm up, your, your lesson on, on arm bars. And they say, okay, everybody line up. We're going to do five minute rounds. And you're like, oh, okay. And next thing you're getting smashed. You're underneath somebody. They're mounted on you. There's no opportunity to do an arm bar, right? So you go back to the teacher and say, you know what, I just got demolished here. You know, you taught an arm bar today, but some guy was sitting on my chest the whole time and I didn't even know how to get out of that, let alone do an arm bar. The instructor tells you, oh, don't worry, just keep coming to class, you'll figure it out. That's like the teacher saying, you know, telling you, well, I know you only know letters. You don't know how to do any words yet, but yeah, write a novel. Well, I can't, I can't. Well, just keep coming to class. Eventually you'll figure it out. And they don't put you on a path to learn things in order so that you can get to the point of writing a novel. And I would contend that novelists are artists as well. But they had to learn the fundamental parts, which is learning the whole structure of language. To be able to have a command of it enough to write a novel. Same thing with jujitsu. You need to learn the, the pieces of the language of jujitsu before you can start conversing in jujitsu. Anyway, I hope that kind of helps to bring things into a perspective that makes you as the learner and the practitioner realize that you shouldn't try to rush into things. Don't be in such a rush to roll or don't be in always a mode to always roll, 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 roll. You have to go back and if you're only a white belt, you don't know anything. If you're a blue belt, you still don't know anything. You know a little more, 
But in the grand scheme of things, you don't know all that much. Purple belts, okay. Purple belts know a lot because to get to a purple belt, you have to know a lot. But purple belts are just finishing up learning all the things there is to learn. For instance, here at Kama Jiu Jitsu, our curriculum, we have about 470 different concepts and techniques that our students need to learn. You're not gonna learn it all in white belt. You might only learn a hundred, maybe uh, maybe about 200 by the time you're done with your white belt. You're not gonna be really good at a lot of them, but you still got a lot to learn. And for me to just say, you know what, you're just gonna just do what you're gonna do and you'll learn things here and there without teaching you everything and expect me expect you to be able to figure things out. No, that's not the right thing. And me as an instructor, I'm not doing the right thing for you when you're doing that. So like I said, to kind of sum it all up, learn all the rules, learn all the techniques, learn all the concepts. That's the left brain side. Once you have it all under control, then you start migrating over to the right brain side, which is the, the emotional part, the artistic part. And then you'll find that it's a whole lot easier. One more thing before I finish up. When I was first learning Jiu Jitsu all the way through maybe Purple Belt, I couldn't see things. I learned things, but I, I didn't know enough to be able to feel things. It wasn't until I was really maybe deep in the brown belt that Dave, Master Dave, began to kind of teach me how to feel things. You feel this, you feel this? Yeah, okay, well, if you feel this, you gotta do this. It's like, wait a minute. You know, whenever I see this position, it's no, 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 it's not see, it's feel, you have to feel it. And that's where things started to now shift in my head. Jiu-Jitsu became a completely different thing for me. It actually became more fun because I was now able to use my entire brain to do it. So I no longer was an analytical jujitsu stylist. I became, I became a cross between or a blend between an analytical and uh, an artistic uh, type stylist. But I've realized in my teaching, when I'm teaching students, you cannot teach students art. You have to teach them science first. So I know this is kind of a lot to kind of get your, get your mind wrapped around. You might have to watch this video once or twice uh, to kind of completely understand what I'm saying. But anyway, I, I hope it helps you. There's a lot of stuff that we, that we go through in our videos. You know, sometimes, you know, whatever we talk about in this video may tie into some other videos. Um, and I know we've got a lot of them, but feel free to ask any questions. I'd be happy to try to answer them in the, in the comments, or I may end up just doing another video if it's a, if it's a question that I can go deep enough into. But I want to thank you guys for subscribing and uh, liking and sharing our videos because that really helps the channel a lot. And at the same time, if you want to learn the concepts and the techniques that we do, there just about all of them are on Patreon. So Dave Kama has a Patreon channel. Uh, the link is going to be below. Uh, that's a subscription service. So if, if you choose a brown belt or a black belt tier, those will be the ones that will make it available, make all the technique, uh, technical concepts available. Uh, black belt, all of them, brown belt, almost all of them. But that's where we, we go over how we do things. And, you know, we also have links for books and for geese. And uh, if, you, if you want uh, coaching calls, then you can feel free to catch me on Clarity, clarity.fm. And I think the link will be in there as well. And I'd be happy to spend some time with you on the phone. I can talk with you one-on-one. -on -one. I can go over um, things that you may, may need uh, some advice on. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Take care and happy training. Bye-bye now.